Hello and welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to successfully deploy a Nest.js application to Fly.io. Fly is an edge computing platform that runs your containers closer to your customers and provides a generous free tier for prototyping and personal projects. In order to take advantage of it though, we'll need to use a custom Docker file, which I'll show you how to set up. To get started, we'll create a new Nest application. I've already gone ahead and done this, but you can just run nest new app name. I've already done this though, so I'm not going to worry about it. And you can use whichever package manager you'd like. It doesn't really matter. Before we continue, just make sure that you have the Fly CLI installed on your machine and that you've authenticated with your Fly account. I'll provide a link to that in the description. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. We will run Fly init to create our Fly project, and let's just use an auto-generated name, and then we're gonna use the Node.js built-in. We'll change this later, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so there's one last thing that we've gotta do, and that is that we are currently listening on port 3000, but Fly wants us to listen to port 8080. There's ways to change this, but it's a little out of scope for what we're trying to do at the moment. So we will go ahead and run Fly deploy now, just a quick warning, this won't finish correctly. So if you're getting errors after this is done, no need to worry. We're going to solve that right after this break. So I'll see you in a minute once everything is fully deployed. Okay, and we are back. You'll probably notice that your app didn't deploy correctly. In my logs, I can clearly see that we're out of memory here. Um, you should see the same. And actually, if I scroll up a little ways, we can also see that our image size is about 500 megabytes. So that's a pretty big image for just a simple Hello World app here. And we can also see that we're clearly out of memory and it is destroying the task. So that's a problem. Okay, so if we pull up fly.io and we go to pricing, we can clearly see that under the free tier, the shared CPU gets 256 megabytes of RAM. If we're running out of memory, that means that we're actually hitting this or higher with our application and it's causing the, the app to close. To solve this, we're going to use a custom Docker file. Now, I will leave a link to this in the description, um, but you can find it under saluki slash nestjs template on GitHub. So what we're going to do is we'll just take the whole thing, we'll copy it, and then we'll head over to our VS Code instance and we will create a Docker file in the root of the application. And there's no extension here. And we're just going to paste this in. And before I forget, I'm just going to clean it up a bit. I'll remove the comments, which we don't need at the moment. And I'm going to make a couple really quick changes before I actually describe what's going on here. So first, I'm going to remove these, which tend to cause issues with our uh, build. And then I'm also going to change this node dist slash server.js to main.js, which if you take a look at our source, we have a main.ts, and this becomes a main.js after we build. So just to quickly run us through what this is doing, this is creating a new um, stage from the node 14 Alpine image, and we're naming it builder. This is an arbitrary name. We can name it whatever we'd like. We're setting up our node environment, we're setting up our working directory, and then we're copying all of the files from this project into this working directory. The next step is that we run our install command and our build command, and this is going to, on the actual the instance itself, it's going to create a new dist folder, and it's going to install our node modules for us. Now, one of the critical lines here is this line, npm prune dash dash production. What this does is it tells NPM to get rid of any of our dev dependencies. We don't actually need them after we built, and we build right here, right before it. If we take a look at our package.json, you can see we actually have a ton of dev dependencies. These are all things that we need when running our dev server or when building our code. For example, TypeScript is listed as a dev dependency. This is because once we've built the, the source code into our dist folder, we actually no longer need it. So this is one of the critical lines that allows us to skirt underneath that 256 megabytes of RAM limitation. Now, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to just copy this line here, node 14 Alpine. We're creating a new stage. In Docker, these are called stages. And in this stage, we're saying set the environment to production, 
set our working directory to the same working directory as before, but rather than copying in all of the files, which you can see here, we're instead copying in specific files. So we're copying in our package star.json files. So that would be the package.lock here and the package.json file here. We're copying in our node modules. So that is everything in here gets copied to our container. And then we're copying in the dist. And the dist is what we actually built back in this command. So this is only going to copy our dist files, our packages, and then our package.json, which might have some commands that you might need to run. And then finally, we're saying when this container starts, run this command. So that's all we actually need to do here. If we run fly deploy again, this is going to start the deployment process and it's going to use our custom Docker file. Now this is again going to take a minute, so pause the video and I'll see you back here when this is all finished up. Okay, if we take a look at our logs now, we can see that we have passed and successfully deployed. And actually what's interesting about this is if you take a look at the image size now, we're only at about 130 megabytes versus our almost 500 megabytes before using the default fly build image. Now, if we come over to our fly dashboard, you can see that we have our builder here, which we don't really care about, but we also have this newly deployed project. So we'll pull it up here and I just want to show a couple interesting things. So first of all, the application runs and it's actually quite quick. So it runs and it prints out our hello world, which is our app services default return. What's also interesting about this, if we take a look at our metrics now, we should have to scroll down a bit. We can see that our mem used is sitting at 94.6 megabytes. This is well under our 228 memory total. So the, the allowed memory for our application. So this leaves about 120 to 130 megabytes of memory for our app to use. And this is going to be used for your assets, your additional dependencies, any more code that you write. And so we, you can see we have lots and lots of room here for our free tier. Okay, so this about wraps up the video. You now have a fully working Docker file integrated into your Nest application. This can be reused across any Nest application, and it can even be reused in other JS applications that aren't specifically Nest, like an Express project or another framework of your choice. If you found this video interesting, be sure to like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any su suggestions on what I should cover in future videos. See you next time.